guys and welcome back here it's your girl miss continental guys i'm not in my best mood this morning i woke up feeling sad homesick feeling nostalgia and in fact very 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 deep in thought I was just minding my own business uh, about a week or two ago, not quite two weeks, when I got this um, WhatsApp video sent to me by a very big uncle by extension. I call him an uncle by extension because we are really not biological, but he's somebody I really look up to. He lives in London, UK. And whenever he send me something, I, I always know, I take it seriously, I know something is up. So quickly, I'm like, okay, let me see what this is about. And um, I saw this military parade in Scotland. I saw, I witnessed the Scottish military, they did their own thing, they paraded, and then the Nigerian military. Oh my goodness, I was like, what a country. I was like, hmm, you know, it provoked so much thoughts out of me. And I was just like, hmm, what can I do to make a difference? What can everybody do? I mean, there's always something to do to, to make a difference, to change a, a, a story, to change a history, you know? So I was like, huh. I was thinking left and right, back and forth. I called a loved one and I'm like, you know what, look at what I saw today. And it's like, send it to me. I sent it and like, he was like, wow. I'm like, okay, I'm going to use this to, to address my viewers. And then for some reason, I let it slide away. I was like, typically I do that a lot. I'm like, you know what, there are other things to talk about. But you know, it keeps resonating with me. Like it keeps you know, flashing in my memory, it couldn't just go off. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to do this. And then I went to bed and then I woke up this morning and I just couldn't keep my calm. I'm like, okay, let me do this. So I know you guys will be like, what video is she talking about? Some of you may have seen this video, but if you have already seen it, I want you to go watch it again and, you know, try to piece out something. Don't just watch and, you know, enjoy it as, oh, it's beautiful, it's nice. I mean, this is what I want my viewers to do. This is what I want people around me to do. Always like, you know, critique, go into details, like try to bring out something out of nothing, you know. So, and for those of you who haven't seen it, you are going to see it for a moment. Okay, just give me a moment. The video, like I said before, was um, a video of the military parade in Scotland, the Scottish, Scottish army, they did their thing. And then it was time for the Nigerian military to do their parade. I was, you know, typically, you know, especially with the situation right now in Nigeria, I was like, these people, they don't come again. What, what did they want to do, you know? But the performance turned me. In my view, the performance is that that can stop a world war. I mean, stop. It can halt it. It can stop it and make all the armed men to hug and leave their guns behind. I sobbed for a moment. Like, really, I sobbed. And I felt so patriotic to my bad country, my motherland, Nigeria more than ever I whispered to myself what a great country until now I was at the verge of giving up as to if Nigeria will ever be great again hmm? if Nigeria is the country I could ever lean on and say you know what I have a country until now I wondered if Nigeria will ever be able to, I mean, take its first place as the giant of Africa. But after watching this video, 
I had a second thought. Yes, the bones shall rise again. Please guys, take a few moments and watch this video and then I will be back with the rest of my thoughts. Good evening everybody. We are live at the Esplanade Castle, Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo at Edinburgh in Scotland. Any moment from now, the Nigerian contingent will be marching in to give their display. Let's watch out for the Nigerian contingent. The Scottish masked pipes and drums are now marching out, being appreciated by the crowd and paving way for the Nigerian contingent any moment from now. We look at the far end of the drawbridge. We have the Nigerian contingent about to march in, led by the band, the Nigerian Army Band from Gas Brigade. Presented. Appreciated by the crowd. Nigerian cultural troops entering the free while the soldiers have formed all around defense. There's a story playing out story of a marriage. You can see the man with the cola moving forward. Give it to the father of the bride. All the other prominent Nigerian ethnic groups being represented. The soldiers have formed a square showing the all-round defense. Rich cultural diversity on show on international stage. One love, Nigeria.
see the crowd reaction. Lovely. Silent drill in front. The band for me, the cyclers are behind. Any moment from now, you shall see the civilians. Charging through the military cycles and the essence is to show harmony between the Nigerian military and the civilian populace. Artistry, skill, precision. The Nigerian team will be matching up to provide space for another act. Salute, matching up. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Being appreciated by the crowd. Is impressed. Well done, boys. Well done. Excellent. Now, guys, in the video you just watch, <laughs> mm -hmm. were you able to identify the north people from the south, from the southeast, southwest? South South Indigenous in Nigeria? Tell me. Or better still, did you see the Aousa Fulanese? The Igbo, Biafra, and all that? Or even the Odudua people? Were you able to identify who is who? Like, what do you see? I know I have come here on this platform to Lambash, you know, on the northern part of the country, people from the north and all that. But, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Let's be honest with ourselves. Did you see any henchmen, like anyone that's full and in, that is, I mean, what did you see? Well, that's a food for thought. As for me, I see one united Nigeria with a united front and at this point guys believe it or not forget about the bra and all that that's going on in nigeria what we need right now what nigeria needs is a united front unity that is the only i mean only remedy the only recipe and the antidote for the current divisions, animosity and antagonism in the country. Remember the tenet of the Nigerian pledge that says to be faithful, loyal and honest. We sit down there, complain about Buhari, complain about the leaders, Let's check our innermost heart and our, and our, our own self within our family. I'm not even talking of the country, the nation as a whole, just within our family, how we behave, how we represent. Okay, 
Let me not talk about family because that's a different thing. Within friendship, within associations we belong. A, a, a case in point now, like a recent case, a recent incident that happened between the AAC, where Oman Yelesh Sowere was um, was um, incarcerated. I mean, he's still incarcerated. He's still in custody of DSS. What did we hear happen? One of its members, one of its members, came from nowhere and declared himself the national chairman of the party. Somebody is fighting a, a revolution which is supposedly we benefit all, I want to believe so, and he's been incarcerated. Ask me folks, is that the right time for such an overthrow to happen within the party? Now what thing will they talk about be that? Again, remember, to be faithful, loyal and honest, we are not even honest with our own selves. In the family, we are not honest with ourselves. As friends, where is our faithfulness? Where is our loyalty? Where is honesty? We don't even have it. And we are blaming Buhari. They say, lead you drops of water. One lead you contribution from me, from you. We make a long way to change that country, to create stability in that country. We don't have it. Who are we to blame? The government, Buhari, can be everywhere. Buhari in Abuja, Buhari in Lagos State and all the states in the Federation. Buhari to come to your family to make sure there is faithfulness, there is um, loyalty, there is honesty. Buhari to come to association, Nollywood or whatever entertainment or whatever association you be belong. Buhari to come there and make sure there is a uh, loyalty, there is faithfulness, there is honesty. Again, the call for service, which is also a major clause in the Nigerian national item. How many of us have service to render? Remember how we got here? It's the unison, the unity that we saw in that video that we just watched. I'm trying to drive home a point here. I'm hopefully we are able to connect the dots. Unity. With unity, there will be faithfulness, there will be loyalty, and there will be honesty. And all these things, all these virtues are missing. Like I said, the call for service is a clause in the national item. How many of us are willing to give this service? We all want to enjoy. We all want to live a kind of utopian life, like drive big car, have lots of money, live flashily, wear the biggest, uh, live in the biggest mansion, and wear like ten thousand dollars wig, human hair, and live flashily. But who is ready to belly? Who is ready to do the service? Work. How many of us are ready to work? And I mean, get it the hard way. We all want easy money. And of course, that's why we have Yahoo and all that. We want easy money. That's why you have people going into a form of criminality or trying to overthrow one another. There's no honesty, there's no sincerity. I mean, you are into business or into some kind of uh, deals with people. The next thing they are thinking of is to outdo, outsmart you. And then we expect Buhari to create the kind of unity that the Nigerian need. I mean, guys, let's be honest with ourselves. We are not honest with ourselves. We are not, we have a great country, Nigeria. Nigeria needs our services. Nigeria needs our loyalty. Nigeria needs our honesty. It takes two to tango. Even in the family, let, let me use the family, the, I mean, the smallest unit in the society. When the man is not faithful, <laughs> of course, we know the wife. We are, we are looking for her, her, hellish relationship. 
And when the man and the woman has a toxic relationship and the children are witnessed, witnessed this, then we know what happens. There's bound to be chaos. Then the same as the country. We know the leaders have a big role to play in this. But we are talking about one leader. And how many followers are we talking about? Trillions, millions of followers. Guys, let's do things the right way. And the little wonder then that Senator Dino Melaye requested that one of Buhari's ministerial nominee should recite the lines or at least some lines of the national item. Because that means a lot. If we can have the national item and the pledge in our heart and work with that, Nigeria can be back to where it was. It's just so unfortunate that the new Nigeria, the Nigerian we have today, is a Nigerian that is saturated with youths. We're talking about youths here. With, okay, let me not just, I mean, uh, uh, limit it to youths. With people with so much selfish interest. With so much selfish interest. Hatred. Jealousy. Envy. And we are crying, Buhari, oh, Buhari did this, oh. Buhari didn't put food on my table, Buhari didn't clean my lawn, Buhari didn't wash my hair. Buhari to be everywhere at the same time. You, me and you, what are we contributing, what are we doing to bring that change to Nigeria? It takes two to tango. We are not honest with each other. We are always ahead, we want to be ahead. Everything we are doing, we want, to, we want to double deal, like we want to outsmart. Not even in the right way, the wrong way. Look at a man, it's just the case of like a man asking a lady out. Just, I love you. The following day, the lady has gone to go and buy baby, uh, baby, what do you call it? Baby creep, uh, baby diaper. It's just, I love you that this guy said, though. He never even proposed marriage. You, the relationship is probably not going anywhere, it's just, I love you. It's probably just a compliment. The following day, the lady has gone to go and buy all the baby materials, if possible, start telling the friends that she's about to get married. That is how, I mean, that is how, I mean, that's how um, uh, overzealous we are. We always taking 10 steps further. Even when things are not going, and when things are not going that way, the way we plan it, let me say, but let don't start. We don't take things one step at a time. Everybody's in a hurry, a hurried life. That's how Nigerians land themselves where they are today. Nigeria can be great again. But it's a collective effort. Just, just reflect on the video that you just watched. Look at that. I mean, which other country do you have to call your own? Forget about if you're a citizen, American citizen, Canadian or EU or whatever you call it. There's no place like home our own is not the same as my own. My own is Nigeria. Anything is happening today is home. And that's why when you do something very terrible in the Western world, they will just suffer carry you go where you from come. Except maybe if you're a citizen here or this. But still, trust me, there are still some crimes against humanity, real crimes that you can commit. That citizen not even look you like her. They will still carry you go back where you from come. No matter what you are in the diaspora, they still see you differently. Whether we like it or not, they still see you as a second class. Nigeria is the country you can call your own, no matter how bad it is. I do have different, a different feeling whenever I land at the Moritala Mohammed Airport and when I'm in Pearson Airport. The, the, the feeling is different. So let's not even deceive ourselves. We have no other country in Nigeria. In whatever way we can contribute, please, folks. I mean, we are from Nigeria and we should not forget that. Let's do all we can in our own capacity. Let's not just turn back against the country. Like anytime I watch this video, I just go down to tears. I just break down. I'm like, what a great country.
look at the pro like look at the artistic look 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 at look at look look at the brains look at the culture look at the representation of our our identity in that i mean who we are look at how it was portrayed through role play through everything what else do we want and I'm hoping as many of us that have had the opportunity to watch this video to have like a kind of um, a second thought that Nigeria will be good again. With that said, we can now see that we all have a part to play in making Nigeria our dream country. Either we accept or not, we are all implicated in the systems that is currently plaguing Nigeria. We have those in powers, or rather, abusing power, and those cheering, <laughs> cheering for them, clapping for them. And even those running dirty errands. We are all civilians. Who are all civilians? I mean to say, like us. We are cheering for the leaders. So it takes two to tango. We are all implicated in this system that is plaguing Nigeria, that is causing all this uh, social unrest. In Nigeria, even those planning revolutions are also implicated in the systems of corruption, power hungry, and all that. I say this because a revolution entails engineering, indoctrinating, and corrupting the minds of people to turn against a current government, thus causing defiance to law and order, instability, and social unrest. That's what revolution is about. So for somebody that's causing a revolution, you want to say that person is con contributing to the betterment of the country? Do you know what it takes to, to cause a revolution? I'm not saying I don't want the situation in Nigeria to change for the better, but resolution, look at that video. Do you think it's a revolution that we need? What we need is a round table talk. The powers that be from all the regions of Nigeria to just sit down. For those of them themselves, they even need to watch that video too. And make I see whether the thing not go touch their mind. Now only devil, even devil, even Hitler, that thing go touch their mind. I was just minding my own business that day. I was so happy. Immediately I watched that video, I shivered, I was sobbing. So the leaders themselves should watch it. They need to sit down and talk. And we should stop making ourselves a subject of ridicule to the outside nations. Look at Ghana. We're near Ghana now. Ghana must go those days. Very soon, we near Nigeria must go. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Before it gets to that point, come on. So Nigerians, home and abroad, let's love our country with passion. Let's cherish what we have in common as a sovereign. For there is no condition that's permanent. Let's not be discouraged with whatever is going on. I know I, I, I saw a few people put their stuff for sale in Nigeria. They say, oh, I want just carry, I want sell everything. I want carry everything come here. I want just settle here in Nigeria. No, 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 no. Where would they run they go? I see that a lot, almost every day. We are not selling any, any, anything. Nigeria will be good again. Let's, let's not give up on Nigeria. Let's, let's, let's join hands together. You know, as we all know, after a hurricane, comes the rainbow. Truly, the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Thanks for watching guys. Until I come your way again, I remain your one and only Miss Continental.